Hey gang, welcome to FX Billiards. Today we're going to talk about five different shots that we're going to add to our five must-have pool shots videos. The first shot we're going to look at is actually a long masse shot. Uh, the way this shot works, because we're so close to the seven ball, it's impossible to do any other type of draw to get back down table to play the eight ball. So what we're doing is playing what is in effect a long masse. And we're also applying English to this shot. So if you look at the screen and you see exactly where we're making contact with this ball, you can see that we're not drawing it straight back, but drawing it back with English. And the key to making this shot is number one, you have to commit to the shot. You have to be willing to drive the cue through the cue ball and into the table or you're not going to generate enough English to make this happen. So what I recommend is you give this a shot, work on it. You're probably going to put some hot marks on your table and um, depending on the type of chalk you use, but it puts a lot of spots on your table. So if you have a break cloth or something you want to practice it with, that's what I would recommend. But this is a very valuable shot and I've used it a number of times in, in matches shot we're going to talk about is not nearly as sexy as this shot, but I think it's probably the most important shot in pool and nobody devotes any time to it. In fact, it's so important I developed an entire system just to execute this shot and wrote about it in my book, 30 Ways to Improve Your Pool Game. And that shot is the lag. Why is the lag so important? The break is obviously very important in every pool game and in order to win the break in most cases you need to win the lag so I'm going to show you a seven step series that is going to help you win more lags I developed this about 17 or 18 years ago and I got some help from some professional players who gave me some tips and I put them all together and came up with a system where I went about 78, 79% of my lags. I actually kept track of them for an entire year. So here's how it works. First off, you want to use a hard tip cue. Find the hardest tip in your bag. I use my break cue because it's got the hardest tip. The break cue is ideal, but if you have another cue in your bag that has a hard tip, use that. Don't ask me why the hard tip works best, but it does. Second thing you're going to do is try to use a striped object ball. You're going to strike this ball at the exact same spot. And what I mean by that is when you're practicing your lag, which is going to be the next item on your list, is to practice the lag on the table you're about to play on. When you're practicing your lag, you're going to strike it in the exact same spot. It doesn't do you any good to practice your lag if you're hitting it center ball sometimes and top some other times. But by using a striped ball, you can find the exact same spot over and over again. So you got a hard tip. You are using an object ball. And you are going to practice your lag. The next item is do not count down. When a lot of people start matches, they count down 3, 2, 1. And then they both at the same time hit the lag. Do not fall into this trap. If somebody else is counting, for example, you fall into their pace and you actually hit the lag at their pace. You can hit that lag at any point you want. I generally let the other person's ball start on the way down the table and then I strike my ball because I'm counting down in my own head regardless of what someone else is doing. So do not count down. The next thing you want to do is don't try to come as close as you can to the rail. Try to hit the the rail. This will help you a lot. Players who try to come close to the rail just simply undershoot the ball. People that try to just um, hit the rail very often get the benefit of having the rail slow your shot down. The last two items on the list are one, have a very short stroke. You do not want to leave a long bridge or a long stroke. So have a very short stroke on this shot and do not follow through. The last item is have a open bridge if possible. 
I shoot most of my shots with a closed bridge, but I have a better touch when I use an open bridge. So use the type of bridge that is going to give you the much greater feel for the ball and the speed of the cue. The next shot we're going to look at is going to be a lot more fun and a lot more exciting, and it is a force follow. Uh, here's the situation. We're playing nine ball, and the two ball and three ball are in our way. So we're going to strike the two ball, go through the pack, and play the nine ball in the corner. And this is a really cool shot. The key here is to, number one, have a good solid force follow shot, which means hitting the cue ball highest possible without miscuing and using good follow through. And what's going to happen is that cue ball is going to pick up spin, your object balls will move out of your way, and you'll be able to play the nine ball. Now, the other key to this shot is to make sure that you're hitting the object ball that you're shooting into head on. If you cut it in any way at all, what's going to happen is the cue ball is going to be deflected and it won't pass straight through. You also need to look at the layout and see where are those object balls going to go because chances are if you're this close to a rail, they're going to come back right at you and they may intercept your cue ball. So here's a longer version of the shot where you're even less at risk of having that interception happening, but you still need to know where your object balls are going to go because you don't want them running into your cue ball along the way. But this is a shot that can win some nine ball matches for you. You went from not having a shot at all to winning the match. So keep this shot in mind. It's a great shot, but you have to work on that force follow. The next shots we're going to look at are what I call gambits. Gambit is a chess term that is a move for advantage. And the same thing happens in 8-ball and 9-ball. Now here we have an 8-ball layout. We have the low balls and the pocket is being blocked by a striped ball. So even though we have easier shots on the table, we play this one ball because the tangent line heads right over to that cluster that we need to break up. The moral of the story is, as I've said in so many 8-ball videos, find your problem shots fix them early, and then you can run the rest of the rack. If we left that shot, even though it wasn't the easiest shot on the table, if we left that shot for later, we would not be running out this rack right now, and we certainly wouldn't be running it out in fast motion. So look for those shots when they come along. Let's look at a couple other situations. Here we're playing the one ball rather than the three or the five. Now clearly we can't win the match without making the seven ball. So rather than have to shoot a bank shot later, we play the seven into the nine, get the nine out of our way, and from that point, we're able to run out and win the match. Where if that nine ball was blocking us, we would have ended up playing a bank shot on the seven. The last thing we're gonna look at is probably my favorite type of safe. This is a safety where you play a shot that clears up a cluster for you, and at the same time, leaves your opponent a more difficult shot. Sometimes you'll play this shot and your opponent won't even be able to strike his ball. But here, we're able to play a shot where the nine ball is going to be a very difficult shot for our opponent. No matter what he does, he's probably going to be a long shot to win the match from here. If he does luck into that nine ball, his chances of getting on the eight are going to be slim. So we're probably going to win this match just by playing this one safety. There were easier shots on the table. We could have made that four ball very easily, but our cluster would still be there. And if we missed along the way, our opponent would have most likely an easy run out. These shots are intended to put ideas into your bag so that when you need them, when your situations come up, you'll be able to draw from them. These are not going to be your exact situations. These are just ideas that will allow you to think creatively when these opportunities come to you. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I appreciate you watching the videos. Make sure you subscribe and let me know if there's anything you'd like to see in the future. Thank you.